Hello and welcome to tutorial 140. Uh, in program 79, I created the following method to print the contents of a dictionary I was using. This is quite a useful thing to do if you're using collections of any type because you need to make sure that the things stored in the collections are the things that you expected or at least you need to check that. But the problem with this uh, method is that it only prints the information in a dictionary, it doesn't, for instance, print the information in a vector. So what I've done in this tutorial is created another method that will print either the information in a dictionary or a vector, depending on what you input. So let's have a look at it. And uh, what I've done is created several different cases and uh, we'll see the result of how the method handles those. Now, bear in mind, this is only looking at dictionaries or vectors. It's not uh, using other types of collections, though I think it could be fairly easily expanded to, uh, to to use other forms of collections. So let's have a look. Called it print collection, and that is printing to a file name input. So the first thing to notice is here in the inputs, I've not specified whether this is a dictionary or a vector. I've simply called it an object. And then what we do in the program is we can test that up that object and say if collect is a dictionary, then we're going to treat it as a dictionary. We're going to create a vector containing the keys, a vector containing the values, and then go through the using Streamwriter to print those values to a file. However, if the object is a vector, in other words, if collect is type vector, then what we're going to do is treat it as a vector. And we're just going to go through the size of the vector and then just print the values for each element in the vector. Now you'll notice one thing that we're doing in both these cases is we've got another uh, object which we've defined in our method called object collection. And uh, if it is a dictionary, we're saying collection equals collect as type dictionary, but then we're still uh, um, defining, uh, redefining, or at least clarifying that as we do, for example, the count, so collection as type dictionary dot count, and then the values in the uh, dictionary, so keys would be collection as type dictionary dot keys, false collection as type dictionary values. And similarly, for the vector, we're saying, again, collection is equal to collect as type vector this time, but then we're, we're um, we're specifying that again as we go through and get information. So to get the count, we're saying collection as type vector dot count. And then similarly, when we're going through the individual elements, we're, uh, we're saying again collection as type vector. And we're using the, uh, the stream writer in both cases. And we're, um, we're going through and printing the information to the file that's already open. Now, one thing you'll notice here is that in both the parts of this method, we first of all test whether the element is a vector or a dictionary. So it's important to remember that a dictionary or a vector can store as an element another vector or dictionary. What we say is if the element is a vector or a dictionary, then we go through again the um, elements in that vector or dictionary. And the way we do that, and this is one of the really nice things about the method, is we call the method again. So we know now that we've got a, a vector or a dictionary as an element in, in this case, the dictionary, but we're not sure which it is at this point. So what we do is we just call the method from within the method. This is called a recursive call. That's one of the really the really cool things about the uh, using a method, and we do it similarly for the vector. So what I'm going to do it probably be a little easier to understand as we go through these various cases. Incidentally, uh, in my one statement, do a little bit of um, setting up. We create the stream uh, stream writer object using the file name input. We set up auto flush, and then we create various vectors and dictionaries. And these are not these are created fairly randomly. For example, the first vector I call vect, and then that's just storing a mixture of integers and doubles, which uh, of course we can do in a vector. 
The second vector, now this one includes a mixture of strings, integers, doubles, and also it includes a vector. It's a little more complicated. Then we've got a dictionary. And the dictionary, it has various indexes here, and it stores some integer values and a couple of string. And then we have another dictionary, and this, this stores a dictionary, in other words, this one here, dict2, it also includes some strings, and it also includes a vector, vector2. Now we know that vector2 has already been set up to include vector1, so there we have a vector, or rather a vector within a dictionary, um, or rather a vector within a vector, and that vector within a dictionary, and we'll just see how the program handles that. So let's just go through this, and the first one I've done it's going to be um, printing to vector text. We're just going to be sending to it the vector, and or rather vect. And this is the simple one, which has just got integers and doubles. So I'm going to go to the chart, and we have the program already applied. I'm just going to double check that I have this set up as the correct file name input. Yep, that's good. So I'm just going to refresh the chart. And then we can go to the results of that. Just got it going simply to C. Just double click on that. Open this up in a notebook. notebook and you can see that simply we're getting the values. Vector 1, 2.0, 3, 4.0, 5, 6.0. I think that's, uh, that's fairly straightforward. So let's go now and look at the second case. And in the second case, we are going to be storing information into this text document, which is T140-dict2. And this time we're going to be putting dict2 into the method. And dictionary2, this is the one that contains some integers and a couple of strings. So also fairly straightforward, but this time we're going to be printing the index and the value. So let's go back to, well, let's uh, verify that to start with. And go format, change the input name to I'll close that and let's again look and see what we've got here. Okay, so broccoli one, carrot two, cauliflower white, corn three, pea green. So let's just uh, verify that that's what we put into the dictionary. So cauliflower white, pea green, corn three, carrot two, corn three, carrot two, and broccoli one. Okay, so that's regurgitating the information in dict two. Now the third one we're going to look at starts to get a little more interesting because we're going to be doing uh, vector2. Now if you recall, vector2 includes vector1 as an element as well as some other information. So I'm going to verify the program. Then I'm going to copy this as the input. So let's go back to the chart and format analysis techniques, format going to change the input to this one, effect 2 say OK, and now go see what the result was. And now you'll see we're getting the vector car boat train, which um, let's just go back and look at the vector car boat train, but then we have the vector. And uh, the way that the uh, program handles this, it then writes this line here, vector contains the following collections content, and it goes through and puts the vector content there, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and then end vector content and then we've got the rest of the vector which is uh, 77, 77.7 .7, and submarine and we can just check that 77, 77.7 .7 and submarine again that seems to be working nicely and then the final one which uh, is the most complicated in this little example has the vector within a vector within a dictionary and going to copy the name going to uncomment this and now being uh, now working on dict verify that and go to the program and format the analysis techniques going to replace the name going to say okay and now we can go and look at the result we get so double click on that and so we have it's telling us we have a dictionary inside the element apple so let's just have a look. 
see if that is the case. Yeah, indeed we do. Inside Apple, we've got Dict2. And Dict2, if you can remember, is this uh, a crazy thing which has got broccoli, carrot, corn, etc. Let's have a look if that is shown. Yes, it is. So the end of collections content. And then we continue and uh, we then get we then get banana which has got vector 2 stored in it so let's have a look how that works so banana contains the following content vector car boat train but then of course that vector also contains some vector content so we do the loop within a loop and uh, that's printed properly then we end that content then we have a little bit more vector content and um, then we and we uh, end that vector content. And then we've got the last elements of the dictionary. Lemon, orange, and peach, which uh, we've not included so far. Lemon, orange, and peach. A little bit uh, easier to understand. So I think you can see the, um, the, the nice uh, way that this works, that uh, a fairly simple method, but quite powerful because we can call it from within itself and therefore we can do this recursive type processing of a complicated dictionary or vector that has that contains other vectors or dictionaries which may contain others and you could go on and uh, add others so what i'm going to do is i'll post the um, the results or rather i'll post the, the values that i'm storing in the vectors and uh, dictionaries and i'll also post the results that we got and then this program will be available for download and uh, I hope you will find it useful.